Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today I'm going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions about Time Machine. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a community of supporters. Join us and get exclusive content at MacMost.com slash Patreon. So Time Machine is something we should all be using to back up our Macs. But you may have some questions about why and how it works. So first, should you be using Time Machine to back up your Mac? And the answer is definitely yes. Hard drives fail, computers fail, computers are stolen, disasters happen. Having a backup of your data is very important. But what if you're using iCloud? I often hear people say, well, I'm backing up to iCloud so I don't need Time Machine. If you use iCloud to store all of your documents and all of your photos, then it is true you do have copies of that on Apple servers. But it's still useful to have a Time Machine backup to have that stuff backed up to another drive locally. Drives are cheap so why not have an extra backup of your data. Plus Time Machine allows you to go back and look at older versions of your files. And it's very important if you made a change that you regret or if you deleted a file and now you want it back. So Time Machine backs up your entire drive. That's everything. System files, library files, things like fonts and all sorts of settings and preferences. In fact, if your drive fails or if your computer is stolen, you can recreate everything on your computer by restoring from a Time Machine backup. So what sort of drive do you need? Well, there are two ways to backup using Time Machine. One is with the drive directly connected to your Mac. And you would do that with a desktop computer like an iMac or if you have a MacBook but it mostly sits on your desk and doesn't move around. In that case, any USB 3 drive will work. You can find a ton of them and they're really cheap if you look online at sites or go to a local computer store. Now if you're backing up a MacBook that moves around a lot and it's rarely sitting on a desk so you don't want to plug in an external drive all the time, you can connect an external drive to most Wi-Fi routers. They'll have a USB port. You can plug it in and then you can access that drive as a network drive. and You can choose that as your backup drive. So what size drive do you need? Well a general rule of thumb is to make it at least twice the size of the data you're backing up. So if you have a terabyte drive on your iMac and you're using most of it you should have a two terabyte drive at least. I would say that at minimum have a one terabyte drive. So even if you have a 250 gig drive and you're not using a lot of it. Drives are cheap so why not get a terabyte drive and back it up. The larger the drive you've got the more of a history will be kept. So not only will you have every file on your Mac now but you also have a history of changes to files and files you've deleted going back months or even years. So formatting a time reaching drive really isn't something you need to worry about. It's automatically formatted when you choose it to be your time machine drive. It's formatted using the old Apple file system which is all that Time Machine works with right now. So I get this question a lot. Should I buy an SSD or an old fashioned spinning hard drive? Most of the time a backup is just writing out these backup files to the drive and speed really doesn't matter. So getting an SSD is a waste of money. And in fact if you're connecting to it using USB you're not even using the SSD at its full speed. The bottleneck is in the cable not in the drive speed. So getting a hard drive for a backup is perfectly fine. So as you make changes to files and delete files and replace them with others what happens when it fills up? Well, all it's going to do is start deleting older versions of files. Time Machine is always going to keep around all the files you have currently on your drive so you have a complete backup for a restore. And it's going to keep as many old versions and old files that have been deleted around as it can. So it's common to actually back up more than one computer to a drive when you have a house of MacBooks got a drive connected to your network drive and you're using that same drive to back up two, three, or four MacBooks in your house. That's normal. In that case you want to make sure that drive is big enough to handle all of that. But otherwise if it's a drive connected directly to your Mac you should have one for each Mac. That way you don't have to disconnect it and move it around. Drives are cheap so why not have a backup drive for every desktop computer. Now this is a big mistake I see people make all the time. They get this nice new external drive. Maybe they've never had an external drive before and they think, ooh, I could put other things on it as well. But drives are cheap. You should only use your Time Machine backup drive for Time Machine backups. In fact, putting other files on it will sometimes mess up Time Machine which is trying to manage the files on that drive. Removing older versions and older files to make room for newer ones. And if you're always putting new things on it or changing stuff on the drive it can lead to issues. So just get another external drive if you want to have an archive drive or something like that. But how about the opposite? How about having more than one backup? You can do this. You can actually plug in a second drive 
and assign that as a Time Machine backup drive as well. This is commonly done in situations where you're moving the Mac around. Like you take a MacBook between home and work, you can have a Time Machine backup in either one. So setting up Time Machine is pretty easy. Matter of fact, if you don't have Time Machine set up and you buy an external drive and you plug it in, macOS should prompt you asking if you want to use this drive as a Time Machine drive. And then everything just gets set up automatically. But otherwise you can go into System Preferences, Time Machine, and then you can select that disk as a drive. And everything else is pretty automatic. So Time Machine backs up things hourly. And a common question is people say, well, can I have it do it less? The answer is you really don't want it to. Because if you have it do it less that means it's going to be doing more work with each backup. An hourly backup is only going to back up things that have changed. It's an incremental backup. So it should be fairly quick. Now there is a way to exclude things from your backup. You can go into Time Machine Preferences. You can click Options. And there you can add exclusions. And this is useful in cases where you have things you know you don't want to back up. So what if you have an external drive that has some data on it and you want that backed up as well. Well Time Machine can back up external drives attached to your Mac. What you want to do is go into those exclusions and make sure the external drive isn't listed there. By default it will probably be added to that list. So you simply remove it from the exclusions and now Time Machine will back up your internal drive and that external drive as well. So Time Machine isn't just for a disaster like if your computer is stolen or the hard drive fails. It could also be used to turn back time when you've made a mistake. For instance what if you accidentally delete a file or a folder full of files and you realize it a week later. You can use Time Machine to get those back. You can even use Time Machine to get back files that you've changed. So for instance you're working with a Photoshop document. You make some changes to it and you realize oh I really want to go back to how the file was yesterday. You can use Time Machine to grab that old version of the file. So restoring a file from Time Machine is a little weird. What you want to do is go to the location of that file. Then activate Time Machine. And it will give you this view of the folder that allows you to go back in time. Select the file and then hit Restore to restore a copy of that file. You can have it replace the current file or have it appear as a new file. If you have any other questions about Time Machine be sure to ask them in the comments. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.